Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller with Inner Integration. Today, the topic I have for you is Flying Monkeys, the Narcissist Tool for Smear Campaigns. So I want to talk today about the role of flying monkeys, about who can become flying monkeys, how the narcissist recruits flying monkeys against the target, why does the, the narcissist use these flying monkeys, and then I'm going to give you a mini survival guide for dealing with flying monkeys. So first of all, flying monkeys are also known as the narcissist's entourage. They're known as their accomplices. They're known as their enablers. They're known as the extension of the narcissist. And it's also like they're their campaign managers. They're out there, you know, recruiting other people, kind of in a way like religious people might knock on your door and try to recruit you into their religion. They're trying to convert you into the religion of the narcissist, which is reality by the narcissist. So the role of these flying monkeys is, first of all, abuse by proxy. Abuse by proxy is when, say, here's the narcissist, and here she gets these people to abuse you. That way the narcissist gets to abuse you, but through these people. You know, they'll reject you, they'll make you feel not good enough, they'll shame you, maybe they'll put you in bad situations, they'll tell you that you're crazy, things like that. And then the narcissist looks like the one that's clean. They're not involved. The flying monkeys are also used to spread rumors and gossip. This is one of their most prevalent roles. You know, they are addicted to gossip, usually. The people playing these kinds of roles where they're going around and spreading all these rumors and gossip that they heard. They also do the narcissist bidding. That's what the smear campaign is, is they'll do whatever the narcissist wants. They want the, nar the narcissist wants them to go out and talk badly about you and, and spread lies about you or... The narcissist wants them to outright abuse you or to make you feel like you don't belong or to invite you to this place where they know that this horrible thing is going to happen for you and you're not going to be comfortable there, those sorts of things. And also, they make the narcissist feel like they're special, like they're grandiose, like they have this high status, like they're this famous or celebrity sort of person that the narcissist wants to feel, that they have this whole entourage around them, just like a celebrity needs an entourage in order to feel secure about themselves. Oftentimes when they go out into public, that's what the narcissist does too. Uh, some of the narcissists don't travel anywhere without at least a little bit of their core entourage with them. They're extremely insecure individuals. Therefore, they need to have those people around them. So who can become flying monkeys? So I would say two different categories of people. The first category is the naive. The naive are people who are just clueless. They can't see it. They can't fathom it. They've never been through anything like that. They can't even imagine that somebody would do such a thing, such as make up all these lies about you and spread them across town. Like They just can't even fathom some, some human would do that. Or maybe the naive is also the fawning type, you know, the type that just fawns into, into this strong, dominant personality and doesn't realize what's happening. You might have noticed that even you became one of these flying monkeys when you were in your naive state, before you woke up, before you figured out what was going on. The second category of people who can become flying monkeys are the toxic. These are the people with no boundaries, or they love gossip and drama, they're addicted to that stuff. They have an integrity problem, and usually they want something from the narcissist. They want status, they want flattery, they want favors. They're getting something out of the narcissist, which is why they're willing to do their bidding. How does the narcissist recruit flying monkeys against the target? Typically, what they'll do is they'll go out, so say, say it was a romantic relationship. You break up, they're already going around town or your community or however you knew this person, maybe even your office, if it's like a, a romance in an office, or maybe it's like a boss or a coworker, they're going to go around and they're going to tell everyone that you're the abusive one or that you're crazy. They're going to usually play one of those two things. So essentially, they're going to project and say that you're the abusive one, meaning you are doing all the things that they were doing to abuse you. Maybe they even call your family members and they try to convert your family members. Or maybe this is even happening in your family the narcissist is within your family and other family members are being used for this purpose. And so the narcissist is going around telling people that you're the abusive one, that you're the narcissist, things like that. Or they play the crazy card. Abusers love 
to call you crazy when you figure out what's going on because they have to discredit you. So if they don't go around and tell everybody that you're crazy, people might believe you. So when the narcissist tells you that you're crazy, that should set off an alarm bell for you to recognize that's a smear campaign. That, that's a clue that they're going to go do the smear campaign. So they're also going to play the role sometimes, especially more women, narcissists than men. They're just concerned about you, you know. They're concerned about your health, like information that was none of anybody's business that you didn't want out there. Or uh, this happened to one of my clients. His wife started telling her family and their friends, their mutual friends, that he was drinking a lot, and he wasn't. And she started telling them that he had some kind of alcohol problem and he overheard this conversation. They'll spread these kinds of things about you. Or maybe they find out that you went on an antidepressant and so then they run their mouths and tell everyone how they're just so concerned about you, that you're so depressed and this and that, these kinds of things. Um, they Basically, it's, it's an incredible betrayal when they reveal something that really happened to you or it's a total lie and they're making something up just to pretend that they're concerned about you and your mental health or whatever that is. But essentially what they're doing is, you know, the narcissist spins this web of a false reality and casts this out among this group of people and then people subscribe to that reality. It's like they become engulfed into that web of a false reality that they think is very real because the narcissist has, you know, these very false but it looks like enormous amount of energy and emotion that they have about this. It really seems like it could be true to a certain point, especially to people who just don't know. But the people who are subscribing and fully knowing the toxic, you know, who, who are partaking in this because they're getting something out of it, they will gladly subscribe to that reality, even if they know that it's a false reality. So why does the narcissist use flying monkeys? Well, first of all, they like to discredit the witness, right? They like to discredit you so that you don't reveal your truth or so that, you know, maybe you'll just be so ashamed and terrified that you won't say anything. You'll just swallow it all. Or maybe they know that you have the balls to tell the truth and tell people in your community and your family and your circle of friends and your office, and they don't want you to reveal that truth. So they have to discredit you. And that way the people aren't really sure who's telling the truth or maybe it looks that you're totally the one who's lying in this situation when that's the exact opposite of reality. Sometimes the narcissist will, will come up with flying monkeys. Maybe you didn't even have a relationship with this person. Maybe you just innocently walked into this new job and this person just started targeting you. Like they just had this jealous competition over your talents, your abilities, your position, your alliances, something like that. You know, somebody likes you who doesn't like them and they want the favor of that person. Any kind of jealous competition can stoke up this kind of um, situation where a narcissist will grab some flying monkeys or create flying monkeys in order to go against you. Part of that jealous competition is that Sometimes they just don't like that others like you. Maybe that person doesn't like the narcissist, or maybe they do like the narcissist, and now the narcissist wants to triangulate in there to make sure that they like the narcissist better than they like you. They can't let you have that kind of friendship or alliance with the person. Also, the narcissist doesn't have to get their hands as dirty abusing you because they can recruit all these other people to do that dirty work for themselves. And finally, they're going to use mobbing against you so that you feel alone and unsure of your reality. All that gaslighting that's happening, okay, when it's one person against one person, that gaslighting can be really challenging. When it's a whole group of people, and that's what the mobbing is, a whole group of people subscribing to that reality and you, you're going to feel really alone and you're going to be really tempted to doubt yourself and your perception of reality. So the flying monkeys can be a very powerful ally for the narcissist. So here's my survival guide, quick guide, for dealing with flying monkeys. First of all, stay in integrity. Commit to 100% integrity so they have nothing to use against you. And part of that is the responding instead of reacting. 
that series of videos that I put out recently and then the one that I did a year ago. So stay in integrity because if you freak out, if you do something wrong, if you abuse the narcissist back or just scream and look like you're crazy, then they have something to use against you. And especially if you do this in front of a group of people, narcissists love to do that. They love to provoke you in front of a whole group of people at a work meeting, at a family dinner, um, you and your partner are going out with mutual friends or something like that. And they'll, they'll do this in front of people. And then it, this will be over a period of time. And they'll get you to do it. That's the worst part is they'll get you to react and look like you're the crazy one and they'll use that against you. The second is to opt out. Opt out of this game. So what does that mean? That means going no contact when possible. So most definitely go no contact with the narcissist, but also you want to go no contact with these flying monkeys. You want to block them most definitely on social media. Why? Because that will be a source of torture for you. The narcissist will leverage social media and all these people against you. And if you're in that phase where you're stalking and you're going online and you're obsessed with finding out what's going on and you're hearing about this flying monkey and that flying monkey and that flying monkey and you're seeing these posts and it's just driving you insane, you got to opt out of that by going no contact with all of those flying monkeys. I wouldn't just delete them off your friends list. I would block them. So you set yourself up for success so that you don't even tempt yourself to go look and then go down that downward spiral and get derailed for days from your projects, from your energy, from feeling good. Another suggestion is don't try to convince them of the truth. Look, people are going to see what they want to see. If they're believing in the narcissist, like I said, two kinds of people, the naive just don't get it. They just don't see it. And you trying to convince them of the truth is not going to help. That never worked. Not one time that I tried that. Never worked. Okay, your true friends are going to recognize. They're going to stand by you. They're not going to question you. They're going to they're going to have your back. Right? Then the other group of people, the toxic people, you definitely don't want to try to convince them of the truth because they don't want to hear the truth. They're getting something out of that relationship with the narcissist. So don't try to convince them. It's going to be a huge waste of your energy. And probably what's going to happen at the end of that conversation or that attempt to convince somebody is you're going to feel even more doubtful about yourself. You're going to doubt your reality. It's going to be hard to be assertive and own your reality. So if in the situation where you can't entirely go no contact with the flying monkeys, say say it's a roommate, it's someone that you live with, say it's someone in a closed community, they're part of your church, they're part of your school, they're part of some group of people you can't cut out, maybe you're still at this job, you can't leave the job yet because you don't have a new job set up, be careful not to share personal information with the flying monkeys. You want the absolute minimum contact with them and nothing personal. Just talk about the weather, just talk about sports, talk about something absolutely meaningless that doesn't have any kind of emotional connection to you or reveal anything personal about your life. They will use all that against you and all of that will get back to the narcissist, which will then have a double impact on you. And finally, when possible, move away. You know, if this is your next door neighbor, if this is someone in a small community, move away from there, get away from there. If you know, if it's in your immediate environment like that, if you're at a work situation, look, you can manage this for a period of time. You can manage it for a period of time. You can learn how to grow better boundaries, how to set and enforce boundaries, how to respond versus react. But that's a temporary situation. You don't want to stay in there. You don't want to keep that job long term. You want to start looking for another job quietly, of course, and definitely don't tell anyone in that office, not even someone you think is your ally who might accidentally reveal that information to the wrong person. But get a new job as soon as possible so you get out of that environment as soon as possible. And finally, I just want to give you guys the benefit. You know, the smear campaign is devastating. Dealing with flying monkeys is horrible. Like there are a lot of people, I'm sure, who have committed suicide because there was this whole group of people against them and they just felt so invalidated, so alone, so deeply doubting of themselves. They couldn't find a reason to go on. They didn't find a way out. They didn't know what was happening. The benefit of this, the benefit of the horror of this whole experience is that you learn who your true friends and allies are. 
and maybe you didn't know. And life has this way of revealing people over time. And it may not be today, but at some point people will reveal themselves to you. And at least, at the very least, at the end of the day, be grateful that these people reveal themselves to you, that they are not your friends, that you're no longer trusting them, that you're no longer sharing and giving energy to them, that you now know not to go there for friendship, for loyalty, for trust. So if you've been through this experience of dealing with flying monkeys, or if you're going through this experience right now, let me know in the comments if something in this video helped you, if something helped you see a bigger picture or some detail that really changed things for you. I'm sending you all a big hug.